Okay, I'm calling the case of Tobin versus Stokes, case number a 199 c Would counsel who is present please identify themselves for the record? Let's start with plaintiff's counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. John Thompson for the plaintiff, Nona Tobin. Mr. Hall? Is Mr. Hall on? Your Honor, he was never on. I've been on since 825, and only me and my client have been on. Okay, Ms. Uh, uh, Wood? Nobody else is He informed the court, Your Honor, uh, through your law clerk, that she would not be attending this morning. Okay. Well, it seems to me this is um, uh, defendants, and that's uh, Stokes and Jim Jack's uh, motion to enforce order for attorney's fees and costs and for contempt, it seems to me the best remedy uh, but to Mr. Hong would be for him to submit a proposed judgment and then he can execute against your client. I don't know that we need to do this overkill for um, motion to enforce the order and all of that kind of stuff. He could just submit a proposed judgment. So that's going to, I'm going to deny the motion to enforce order without uh, prejudice, but it seems to me that's the best remedy. Okay? I agree, Your Honor, um, although, <laughs> as my brief points out, there's, there were several issues with this filing of this motion, and I think, you know, if it's, if, if it's good for them to get attorney's fees on a motion that was improper, or in our case, we filed a complaint that we felt was in good faith, um, then certainly we should be awarded attorney's fees when he filed, at best, a premature motion. And um, now he didn't show up here. He didn't stay on the, the call last week. And my clients, uh, just, just in the hearings alone, two hours, let alone our eight-page motion, because he didn't file a notice of entry of order under uh, NR NRCP 58 within 14 days. Um, that would trigger a stay to enforce the order at 60, Rule 62. And, of course, he hasn't met any of the requirements for contempt. Uh, so, anyway, I... I I know we learn after 25 years of practicing, this is my 25th anniversary, that when you win, to be quiet. But at the same time, my client is on the phone with this, and I need to be able to uh, just make a record of, of the arguments that we have with regards to this. We, we want to make sure that the process is fair for all the parties. Okay. Well, um, counsel, I will say, uh, you say t you've been on the uh, phone for two hours. Um, no, two hours last time. He didn't show up at the last hearing. I think that was maybe a court mistake, but he still didn't stay on when you recalled the case, Your Honor. We stayed on the whole in, whole time waiting for the second motion that was noticed um, by, the, by the court. That was last uh, Thursday, and then we've been on the uh, call this morning. So that's, that's what I meant by that. Okay. Well, there you have no motion pending before the court. I'm uh, here to decide... Uh the other one, and that was, uh, again, it was a court mistake in terms of calendaring, but uh, my ruling is that if uh, Mr. Hong wants to pursue the uh, judgment against your client, he should submit a proposed judgment. Um, if he's saying that you, your client's not complying with an order, well, submit the judgment, and then he can go ahead and execute upon our assets. So, and if you find it appropriate to file a motion, you most certainly can. Okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Okay, let's go. Have a great with, day. Uh, you too. Let's go with uh, Champery Rental REL. That was the, on the page before. This is an application for default judgment, and it's a prove up, so that would be a bench trial. Here is. Oh. Here, you can yes. go ahead and keep that. Mm -hmm. 